The Internet Governance Project has written a few things about this. Um, we have papers which explain how we think this should happen. Uh, basically, it involves uh, sticking pretty much with the ICANN structure, but uh, getting the U.S. government out of it. So you denationalize the control of ICANN, which means that you must establish appropriate forms of accountability for ICANN. Uh, and uh, there are various institutional proposals around for how to do that. Um, Carlos has uh, proposed one of them. Jack the Ripper proposal. The what? Jack the Ripper proposal. The Jack the Ripper proposal. He, he wants to use that name. Um, so in terms of what timetable uh, and how fast, uh, we believe that this could happen uh, as soon as in two years, uh, maybe sooner if it depends on certain ICANN reform processes, uh, and that um, you know, once you have denationalized the name and address spaces, that uh, you should rely also on some kind of uh, framework of principles for how governments uh, exercise oversight. Uh, we prefer to think of this not as governments intervening in ICANN whenever something happens that they don't like, but again, having very clear, well-defined principles and rules uh, that limit the power of governments as well as of ICANN, and that the governments basically make sure that ICANN uh, treats people fairly and doesn't abuse its own processes, but does not try to shape the policy outcomes uh, on a day-to-day -day basis based on geopolitical contention. We would like to remove the internet from geopolitical contention as much as possible. Uh, I feel compelled to uh, respond as well. Uh, I'd like to suggest to you that the current processes for dealing with domain names are largely bottom-up processes. Uh, ICANN does not dictate what top-level domains are proposed. It has to deal with those which are proposed. Uh, mechanisms for determining whether there are conflicts uh, in interest for certain domain names are being developed. Uh, this is going to be particularly important with the internationalized domain names. And I think I feel also compelled to point out that the U.S. government in its oversight role thus far has never uh, rejected any recommendations made by ICANN for the installation of top-level domains, of either country code origin or generics. Uh, and so it has been, frankly, a rather benign uh, operation. I fully understand the desire to depoliticize by having no special uh, responsibilities by any one government. That's why there's a governmental advisory committee. It's there to absorb the uh, public policy aspect of ICANN's operation. We consulted in the UK about people's priorities for Rio. Uh, that included industry, it included civil society, NGOs, parliamentarians, as well as government. And what came through was that security, confidence, is the biggest issue. Uh, and that's very much an issue for partnership and design. It's also important to link security to enterprise. In other words, security has to be connected to the cutting edge rather than as an afterthought. Uh, so, for example, this morning, in his comments, the Secretary General mentioned child safety as something that should be at the heart of our work at the IGF. Vince earlier talked about access for all children. And those two are linked. Access and safety are linked. We need to make those connections. So worldwide, we need to connect security, access, and openness. Second comment, there's a problem. Because the internet is so big, so fast, everybody grasps one corner of the picture, be it security, communications, education, open access. And we lose track because they're interrelated. And that's why I think, for instance, the comment from Mr. Unger this morning was wrong to look for an old style institution to be able to deal with the international aspects of this. That's reaching for a safety blanket because it's a shape that we already understand. The focus has to be much wider. People, information, progress, development, as well as systems. Uh, and that's why in the UK we're going to try and walk the talk uh, and de uh, demonstrate our belief in the IGF approach by establishing a United Kingdom Internet's Governance Forum, a UK IGF bringing together industry, NGOs, parliamentarians with government uh, to tackle the sort of issues uh, that we're talking about. 
And the question I'd like to leave, particularly perhaps for Vince, but perhaps other members of the panel, is how can we deepen the cooperative engagement, the teamwork, the, uh, the, the, the bringing together of people between IGFs so that we're making that much deeper and stronger? Interactions in between uh, the IGF sessions, there are several options. One of them would be for the participants in the IGF to participate in some of the other organization meetings that take place during the course of the year, going to an RIR meeting in a regional area, coming to an ICANN meeting, uh, going to one of the uh, Internet Society sponsored events. All of those things would be helpful because those of you who participate so far only in the IGF would be bringing your uh, thoughts and perspectives to these other events as well. And I would find that very useful because when we reconvene the IGF again, uh, you will be bringing some exposure to those other activities. That would be very helpful in the course of the discussions that we have in the IGF. Acting on an integrated basis as a check or balance, remember the idea of a constitution, of a set of globally applicable rules that would serve as a basis for constraining ICANN when it does something wrong and enabling it to do the things it needs to do. But to have governments inside of ICANN is a very unstable and informal and very unworkable solution to the problem of the relationship between governments and ICANN. Because what happens is that you develop policy through the organic tracks of ICANN, and then the governments stick their finger in and say, oh, we don't like the result of that, or we can't agree. Uh, GAC has no, you know, you say it's only advisory, but in fact they have enormous informal kinds of power Things have been held up in ICANN simply because certain governments, not all governments, but certain governments don't want them to happen or to be concluded, or they have been short-circuited and thrown back into the process of policy development. So you have no well-defined, formalized set of powers for GAC. Uh, the, the joke in the U.S. during WISIS was that the U.N. was out to take over the Internet. The response is that if the U.N. takes over the Internet, it will do so through the GAC, because governments within GAC have more power than the UN or the ITU will ever have over, over ICANN.